On today's episode of The Zoo, we have Anna Maria Trousseau, she sings. We have Taylor Thompson, CBD, and we have Rodrigo Massa, he acts and sings. It's all going down right here on The Zoo. We are here on The Zoo, and when you're in The Zoo and there's a lot of animals, um, you know, yeah, viruses break out. Yeah. That brings us to today's big deal. <laughs> So what do you think about the coronavirus? Is it scary? Uh, to Are you nervous? Thing, I was. In the beginning, I was, because it was like this big thing. And oh my god, now it's in the US. And it's in the OC. And I was like, oh, heck no. We are so close to the OC. Oh, hell no. Oh, yeah. hell no. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of it's like media hype. <laughs> OK. To be honest with you, there was some lady on CNN yesterday who got the coronavirus on a cruise. She looked like she just got back from the buffet. She said she wasn't uh, even on medicine. Oh, No, what? I saw that. That they like stopped everybody yeah. in that one cruise. Nobody was able to go in or out. Like, they just stopped everything that was going on But she said she's on, on zero medicine. I think part of it's like media hype. Although, if I got the coronavirus, I would like to drop a few pounds. I wouldn't be upset if I got it. Especially no. you have to but here's the thing. Have you seen some of the videos of like the Chinese authorities dragging people yes. out of their homes? Yes. They don't Shut look sick. Up. They're like fighting back and like, no, I it's know. like they're not even coughing. Like, what's the deal? It looked like a casting call on Actors Access. <laughs> it seems a little too orchestrated if you, but you, well, certain people in uh, in China, you could only, one person from every household could only leave the house once every three days to go grocery shopping. No, it's God, crazy. I I but listen, oh, okay, so like we're old enough to like remember, not you because you're a little baby, and you're still a baby, but do you remember like SARS and yes. like mad cow disease? And so it always starts in China. For some reason, Everything diseases does always start in China. in China. Well, did you see that they, how they think this started? Because uh, it's, it might have started from boiled bats. Oh, okay. boiled I saw about bats. I saw yes, they bats eat boiled and bats then... in that ca and that that who who, oh, who which, what is it called? Wuhan province. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, so they thought it was, the so they they thought it was bats, them. and then they thought it was uh, snakes, and now they're thinking it was uh, what is that little big animal that has like heart Marmots? shells? Marmots? No, porcupines. Pon, pon, pon loin. Pon oh yes, yes, yes. You know what? what? what I saw that. They use the shell of this animal for like medicine. Use. Armadillo, armadillo. It looks kind of it's like kind that. No, like it had it. to be the bats, man. You see this girl, and she's like this nice, you know, sweet, like like well kept looking girl. And she's and it's they don't even like skin it or take the fur off. It's just oh. boiled like this, and they're just biting off the wing. No, no puedo, skin, no puedo. I'm honestly like a little scared. To be honest with you, I didn't get the flu shot this year, I did. which is the first year I didn't get it. Why are you getting the flu shot? No, don't get the flu shot. Really? Yeah. I never did, and I got it, and nothing happened. So I was like, okay. Well, okay, so you're already good. Look, I'm knocking on wood. Are knock you on wood for everybody. Please. Knock on wood. No, knock on wood. Now, do you think you it's media hype, hype, or do you believe it's that both. it's No, there is a coronavirus. And by the way, but before yeah. we continue with this, because I do like the media hype angle, what do you think about how funny it was that everyone was like, no, it's not the corona, like the beer virus. It's <laughs> nothing to do with Mexico. Anyway. I know, yeah, I but you saw the memes that were like, oh, I've had the coronavirus my whole right. life. Uh -huh, but okay. interestingly <laughs> enough, lime sales went right up. As soon as it went out, people were like, I'm squeezing this right into my <laughs> That's so funny. Um, wait, you thought media hype? Yeah, it is part media hype. I do believe that there's there's a new they disease. They always hype it all the time. But they, I mean, this is a little scary. I don't remember SARS being like this, where they're like just dragging people out of their homes and throwing them into hospitals. And 900 deaths in 30 days. That's crazy. It which is. is a lot more than I think. But it's... don't forget that the flu kills way more. Just yeah. yeah. I mean, is it like old people and young people, or like it's do you have a chance? It's mainly a lot of older people, that, and and these people already have something going on. Like I was reading the story that a grandfather, then a grandmother caught it first, and I mean the the grandfather was dying from like lung cancer and some other cancer and then the grandmother was already really sick about with something and then they pass it on to the family and then that pass it on to everybody else and so I think it catches on if you have a very weak immune system it's gonna really strike you first. But is it like a cold? It, it, it All I know is I'm getting the hand like sanitizer yeah. I'm eating those little tangerines I'm not taking yeah. any chances. Yeah it gives you like sometimes the little pneumonia. mandarin oranges. The little mandarin whatever it takes to keep my vitamin C levels up. You gotta take the not mandarin shot. oranges. No 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 Yes. <laughs> the one fluffy girl. All right, but did you get the joke about the manager? I did. No, yeah. did she? Yes, oh. both. Why? There, it's language. Right? <laughs> oh, my god. But I think gracious. that there's also been a lot of racism. Oh, yeah. That, is, that has it occurred does. because that of, sucks, you know, yeah. the coronavirus. So, yeah. you know, I think we need some facts. We need did some you truth. Guys is see it as scary as is it, they're saying it is? Yeah, but did you see that? The, the Disney meme with oh, all the princesses it? and then Mulan? I, I was know. like, oh, no, y'all need to One of my party. teachers from high school posted that. I was Shut like, aren't up. you a city school teacher? 
You haven't seen that meme? Wait, what's the meme? It's, it's like all the Disney princesses and they all have like little face masks and then Mulan is just standing there and they're like, no Mulan, you gotta step away. Something like that. They I left was her like, out of it. Yes. Oh. I was like, no, that's too shady. She's gonna sing Reflections now. All about being <laughs> yeah, accused of having the coronavirus. It's kind of bad. Okay, because, yeah, okay. Let me I hope it doesn't drop any Mulan, Mulan sales no. with the new movie No, because they're out. saying it's like an Asian joke, right. which is horrible. Well, you know, I've seen yeah, I've seen videos like on the subway where like you know any any like they've shown Asian women with a, with a mask Face on mask. and then people are, people are getting like scared and saying get away from me and all this stuff. Yeah. Can I ask you? Do you judge when you see somebody with a face mask? I get nervous, but I me. understand. Because I'm like, you know that one time I, on a plane, I put it on. I, I put on, I, because I was like, I'm tired of getting, I was getting sick every time I got, not every time I went on the plane, but like, you know, every time I got sick, it was because I went on a plane. Mm -hmm. So I put on the mask, but I, I don't want to scare people either. I don't know, I have mixed feelings, like I get it. Like, but a lot of times they're not, they're not doing it because they're sick. They're doing it because they don't want to get sick. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 so it's, it's a mixed feeling, I don't know. Yeah. I'm taking my vitamin C. That's one take thing I can tell you from shots, this segment. Take your ginger shots, take your Get some sleep. Yeah, you nest the main thing. Sleep, Sleep and eat well. Sleep eat well. Yeah. Eat and if you well, pee, wash anything. your hands. Don't take any chances. Because I'm in the men's room. A lot of men don't wash their hands. I know. Um. Well, you know what? Like, so, uh, I gotta be honest with you. Some bathrooms, some men's bathrooms are so disgusting that I'd rather not even go to the sink right. and catch something I'll else. I'll pee my pants. You know <laughs> Safer. Well, it's sterile. Corona free. <laughs> <laughs> corona free. Tastes like corona. Um, oh, listen, we got one minute left to the commercial break, so what else can we say? Do you have any medical ailments you want us to look at? I've been actually here? pretty healthy for the past year. Good. I actually That's really good. That's really good. Do you isolate yourself? No, because you're in a relationship right now. Oh, don't even get me started. I don't want to talk about my personal life for the whole world. I think I'm good. Except maybe next segment. <laughs> Nikki? What was your question? Have you been catching germs? Have I been catching germs? Tell us about uh, this story I, you just I told just us got, I'm not, 30 seconds. I am not getting germs because I use a neti pot and this I'm actually a sponsor for Dwayne Reed. So, <laughs> so thank you. No, I, I'm really afraid of germs. I don't like people touching me. I don't want to get sick. Yeah. I carry hand sanitizer Seriously. everywhere I go. And But although I think if I did get the coronavirus, I think it'd make me more likable. <laughs> we don't want to <laughs> hug you. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break and keep it right here because we'll be right back on the Zoom. Our first guest today appears in the World War II epic Midway. Give a nice warm welcome to Annie Trousseau. Hey. Annie Trousseau. Yes. You look glamorous yes. as hell. I feel glamorous. Thank 1940s you. 1940s vibe. I love it. A little, like, I don't know. I just love it. I hope a little, little vintage flair. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, is that what helped you natural. get a role in a, in a film that takes place in the early 40s, the fact that you kind of have, like, this 40s thing going on? That's a very good question. And I would like to think yes. I... Honestly, getting the call from Roland Emmerich to be the one singer who can sing a song in a major film is ridiculous to right. begin with. But the fact that it's so tailor-made to what I do right. and that I felt like I was the perfect fit, it's, this is what I do. I sing music from the 20s to the 60s. Uh, the singer is a 1941 singing in the Navy band. And it was the most amazing, happy day of my life being on set. And Judy was like, I was just smiling, I think, nonstop. Have you always Getting loved to big do band? What I do. Did you always love big band music? Um, not particularly big band. I love vintage. I love the poetry and the musicianship of the days gone by where they, you know, they would construct this beautiful piece of art on, in a song that would be that we call songs these days it wasn't just we have to make a hit it was about the poetry it was mm -hmm. about a real feeling and about something a little deeper that's what speaks to me and that's why I love to perform the music that I do well, and then there's oh. also a performance right is you're not just like stand there there's a whole thing about how you perform sure. and music now so um did you get cast because they ran into your music and they realized it would be perfect for the film and then it was there like an auditioning process or uh, or did they, or did you audition for a role that said singer 1941 and you were like, okay, this is, is something this I, like do. I, I got yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. No, it was actually um, Roland Emmerich and Harold Closer, they frequently come to my performances here in LA. Oh, wow. They know me. They're all, at every single one when they're in town, they come see my shows. And they're always different. One night it might be Noche Colombiana. I'm only singing Colombian music. I was born in Colombia. Sometimes I do world music. I sing in nine different languages. So I'll do French to German to Italian to Portuguese to Spanish to English and it'll be complete. So I change it every single time I perform. Wow. It's, that's what's fun for me is constructing and yeah. curating almost like maybe a curator at a uh, gallery would put together a special presentation for a certain exhibition to convey a specific message. I think about that every time I put on a show and so they kept coming and seeing me perform and knew that I could 
fit into this, I guess, yeah. or, or trusted me and put faith in me to be yeah. able to do it for them. And um, even though they made me a blonde, which is fine, <laughs> um, I wear wigs well. in my shows too. I wear blonde wigs and change You're all like the time. You're like a master of disguise. Sort of. I yeah. love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the song in the movie. The song in the film is unbelievable. It's called All or Nothing at All. It was a song that, um, to all of us, uh, we had about two weeks from the time that they added a scene where they needed a vocalist to actually shooting. So we had to find a song, pick a song that everyone, that Roland would agree on and say, yes, this is it. And they had asked me, what are the ones that you would suggest? So at the top of my list um, was this song, All or Nothing at All, that I found a very early version from, I think it was 1939, Frank Sinatra with the Harry James Orchestra when he was mm. only about 25 years old before he was famous. Had a very different inflection and articulation in his voice. It was very tender and it's about giving everything in love, which is the same as in war. You do it all the way or you might as well not even try. God, right? so beautiful. I almost cried right now. I'm at war with myself all the time. Yeah, so I, I felt it. I felt it. I felt that, yeah. yeah. So I thought, okay, this really fits this story of these heroes, um, you know, leaving everything, leaving their families, knowing that they may not return, that mm -hmm. they have to do this for a greater cause and a greater good, you know, being like far outnumbered by this huge Japanese Navy fleet that was like, you know, the Imperial and the Japanese Navy, and it was like ridiculous odds against are, are the Are you really into history? Is that something? I mean, obviously no. you're into a historical era of music. I, well, I am, and I'm, I always say I'm a bit of a historian because I love to research the music that I'm going to perform, that I am, you know, taking back to sometimes, you know, the 1700s or the 1500s. It depends on really? where I find a song. I go to the earliest possible version. But your version. soul and your look, let's be honest, is 40s and 50s. The classic reds, the pearls, lately the beautiful I'm, hairdo. <laughs> yes, lately I'm, I'm going a little more towards the 40s vintage vibe, but you know, it changes. I do sometimes all 60s French pop and it's a little more sassy and a little more of that era, even though it has some vintage element to it. It's not strictly 30s, 40s. And wh wh why do you change it? Is it because of the music you're singing at that moment? Sure. Or, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if a sh like I did a show in in November last year where it was strictly that 60s pop genre. So it was you know the British pop bands mm -hmm. of the day mm -hmm. mixing some of that stuff with the Serge Gainsbourg with, with Brazilian pop yeah. from the 60s. Casa, so what is it it's, called? You can do, yeah, but like yeah. more of the more of the funk you know kind of stuff okay. that was a little bit less. The, you know, not the boleros and the right. elegant thing, and that was what was fun about being in a, in a film, because I, I got to do all the stuff I love to do, but take it just one step further. Mm -hmm. And you now have such a distinguished taste in music, so it, when you're dating somebody and they play like 50 Cent, like what do you, yeah. like, is that? Oh, but I love all kinds oh, of music. Oh, you do? She's got to rap on, all kinds uh, of on her stage <laughs> at some point. I want to hear your mixtape. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, know. I would make amazing mixtapes. I should be a DJ at some point. I love finding and making playlists and picking awesome music to kind of combine and be all over the place. I love rock. I love uh, stuff from all over. I love old hip hop from the 90s. I love all, everything. Wow. But you, you, you're actually, I mean, you were born and raised in Medellin, in Colombia. I was born in Medellin. My family lives, lives in Bogota, my okay. extended family. My mother is American, so I grew oh. up speaking English oh. and Spanish simultaneously. Um, and we traveled, I traveled, I actually grew up in Mexico as a kid what, for what? like six years. Wow. We lived in Mexico. Ah. In Mexico City? In, in, in El DF, and then also Guadalajara, and in Aguascalientes, oh, Monterrey. Oh, stop! Oh my god. And every summer we would travel to a new like resort town, Puerto Vallarta, Manzanilla, Ixtapa, Chihuatanejo, whatever, mm. and we would sing as a family. What would you guys sing? Would you sing the style of music that you, you're singing Very now? Very similar. Okay. That's a little bit how I, the trajectory that I started on with my family, brought me to where yeah. I am today wow. because wow. we started doing a little bit of international music you know I think my father loved Julio Iglesias and how he started singing in French or Italian or Portuguese and little by little we would add a song and wait wait so, you, so your father was a professional singer too yes my, I grew up singing with my two sisters wow. and my parents it That's was what like we what did. was the band uh, in the 60s or 70s that was a whole family um, here in the United States well, there was like the Jackson Five. Okay. Um, there but was <laughs> you have a better story than the Jonas Brothers. No, but there was a family. They had a, they had a TV show. This is like seventies. Nikki, you know more about the, this the is long, 70s. You know. all, well, I can all of them sang like the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I was they sing say, too. the Brady Bunch. And There's another the, one. 
Nikki, help me out. Your, your parents are probably into it because he's from Long Island. So we they were called the Von Traps a lot because the, you the know the, the ones from Austria, the story of the Sound of Music, oh, okay. where they would travel. Oh, yes. and all yes. family yeah, 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 yeah. People were always call, like comparing. Joe us a to, deer, yes. a female deer. Yes. I know exactly. I would love to see you yes. in a leader hosen. I would love to actually sing all of that music and be like in a reproduction of the sound of music. Well, oh, I, grew up, I grew up listening to all me of that. Me too. <laughs> okay, but let's do it during okay. October. It'll be Oktoberfest. I bet you can totally yes. do that the, the German Oh, woman. you don't even know. Those are called dirndls. You know, those those dresses that the girls wear? Yeah. And yeah. I know all about them and I would love to have them. Let's talk okay. more about your fashion. We're going to go to commercial and we'll be right back on the zoo with Annie Trousseau. Yeah. Right? Yes, Did I pronounce sir. it right? Absolutely. Annie Trousseau. We'll be right back. which you steal the show and with this amazing number is released on DVD and it comes yes. out when? Well, digitally, it has been already since April, okay. I think, 4th, and now the 18th, um, oh, sorry, April. February. What am I saying? February, that yes. That happens to me all the That's time. That's me. It's been an early morning. Yeah. But February, <laughs> um, everyone can see it in their homes. And awesome. there are a lot of really awesome, exciting extras, like the Code Ooh. Breakers, who were all musicians, of course. Nice. And how to decipher all these Sweet. secret codes and so help win. Are you going to do more acting, though? Or is it acting like, an, like a thing for you? Or is it, is it mostly music If it involves all the time? music, absolutely. Um, if it doesn't, I don't really don't know. I mean, if if it would be fitting. Have a look. If someone gives yeah, me that call, yeah. maybe then I will make that decision. I feel right? like this is going to be the breakthrough of I feel like so glamorous. Why would you want to be somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm always kind of somebody else. You oh, know, I was, born, I was born. I was born in Colombia. I don't, I don't think you you realize that's that that's my that is not my given name, Annie True. So right. So What's I your given name if you don't mind? In a way, playing a part and mm. becoming Annie True. So every time I. I'm on stage and I'm presenting this music and it's really helped me to actually be a better performer because I'm not so concerned of everyone staring at Ana Maria right. all day long. <laughs> it's me, it's me. I, I think that's kind what performers of, kind of hide behind secret. that a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes performers have an easier time. You know, I have a lot of friends that are comedians like Nikki and Gabby puts out, you know, videos for the world to see and I think it's easier for you guys to talk to 10,000 people at the same time than it is necessarily like one person. Heck yeah. yeah. Right? Heck yeah. I'm really broken. Yeah. So Aww. am I. But <laughs> let's, let's get fixed with music now. Before I, I show this, I gotta say, the, you got a lot of things going on this, that are remarkable and glamorous. I, I love you. the old, the, the pearls and the red lips and the red, Thank but you. your hair. God, it's so beautiful. Who is your hairstylist? Let's just give a Get round of applause to whoever did yes. your hair. Who did Please your hair? I will. Her name was Emily. I met her today for the first time and she was the most awesome young lady from Minneapolis or from Minnesota. You got this anyway. done this morning? Yes. Well, wow. she no, wait, my hair, but she style. My hair is very obedient hair. I have to say thank you mom and dad and all of my ancestors for bestowing <laughs> upon me this lovely hair that I have <laughs> because it's so obedient. I just I'm like do this and it just stays there. I'm I like wish. do that, it stays there. It's curly naturally. So it kind of just you kind She of, loved doing your hair. It's like Play-Doh. I should let my and you let yeah, I like that. <laughs> See this twisted hair of mine? Like, you can't do anything. That's why they always do this. Because they're like, they're all, I'm not going to waste my time curling your all hair. All those times I complained <laughs> and had to gel and, and diffuser. You know, when you're younger and you just, you're like, you have this frizzy hair. Yeah. And now I, I so appreciate it. And I love having my curly hair. I think you need to get a, a sponsorship for hair product. Because uh, they'll, they'll do right by you. Oh, and nice. uh, so this is pink and blue. This is. Annie Trousseau. Uh, by the way, what, do you spell Annie like that? Kind of like uh, the character, right? The, the little orphan Annie? Yes. Right, that's the same spelling, exactly. <laughs> but you're not inspired Another by that in any way, are like you? Because she used to sing. <laughs> is that where it inspired? Well, no, but Annie for me, my name is Anna, my given name. Right. And so when I was coming up with a name for a band, Annie was very close to it. One of my sisters would annoyingly call me Annie and get on my nerves. And then I said, wait a minute, that might actually work because I'm singing in French mostly at this time. And let's... Let's try that and see if we like it. And I went with it, and then Trousseau was another. It's a long story, longer than we have probably today. <laughs> Why but did you decide to call it Pink and Blue? It fit. Um, Pink and Blue came, it, it had a different name for a long time, <laughs> that it was just there, that it came thrown out at me, and I thought, that will be the name. And then it just, I couldn't come up with a concept for shooting the cover. I couldn't, it wasn't materializing. It just wasn't happening organically. When I changed it to pink and blue, it's because for me, it's that femininity and that um, uh, liveliness and that vibrance, but also blue has, and pink is also not just male and female or masculine and feminine, which I hate, like, oh, only females can wear pink and only males can wear mm. blue. Mm -hmm. But it's about the moods of it, music. Wow. That it's 
kind of, it's lively and it's fun and it's right. like taking a road trip, you know, on the Mediterranean, but it's also really intimate and moody at other points. Gosh, so it kind of so, has both. You really are so poetic. Okay, so you, oh. you're talking about, you sing in all these different languages. Do you yes. just sing it or do you speak it? Because I know I have a friend that does opera and all of that and he it's sings amazing. in German and everything, but he doesn't really speak it and he only understands what he's singing because he has to do the research of that song. Yeah, so you have to. Do, do you actually speak all these languages as well fluently? I don't speak them all fluently. I understand a lot of, you know, the Romance languages. I speak Spanish fluently. And then, of course, there's Italian, there's Portuguese, there's French. There's a lot of languages that are very similar or share a lot of the vocabulary and the roots and from Latin. So you can you can get by, you know, understanding when you're singing beyond just studying exactly what you know phonetically and you know what the pr only the lyric that you're reading is mm -hmm. or that you're singing or you're performing. German, I have a beginner kind of. That's rough to take. sing, though. I mean, <laughs> German. The other, I understand it the romance language. It can sound really beautiful, though. It can sound really beautiful, and it's German is really lovely because the rules don't change. You know, in English, like you can't. No one knows how to spell anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> we went through like. Why are there so many silent Just letters? Just look on Facebook. No. True. Yeah. So, well, you know, you know that English has the most words out of any language on earth because they they take. We borrowed Well, that's because the thing. So they take many. they take yeah. a lot of uh, yeah. stuff. Uh, so, are these all covers? These are all covers, with the exception of one. There's okay. one song that's original, which is called "Skin and Teeth." Um, that I wrote that's on there. And so how does it work doing covers? Do you have to reach out to the publishing companies of the original songs or, or is there artistic license to do covers without doing that? When you're going to release a cover or do a cover song, you have to get the rights and you have to pay the people who have the, own the publishing or the original songwriters mm. of the music. So it's a, it's a process that you have to go through and it's kind of tricky because you um, I don't want to. I, I often feel like it would be really useful to maybe have a podcast about this because I do a lot of. I really love doing the work myself, and knowing what goes into the mm. process. So I know a lot of it. But you know, there's a company that you have to reach out to, and you have to say, you know, you can input in a database oh, now. I see. This is a song. These are the songwriters, so they know which version you're you're talking about, and then you get the permission for and it. You and you have to, to prepay. Oh, that's what I was going to say. How many? units you think you will sell that year and every oh, year you have to renew so okay but what if you impossible. under what, what if what if you sell more units than you pick can't you just be like i'll get you i'll, I'll cut you guys as soon as i get you know i Did really don't <laughs> i really don't know i think be so you have to invest number. in just to get, get a hold of these sure. songs to be able to release them. sure wow. yes but i love it and i love doing it because a lot of these songs the reason why i'm so passionate about them beyond just completely loving the music itself is that i feel like they could be forgotten at a certain point if we don't keep performing right, them and keep right. putting them out. This year, mm -hmm. after uh, Pink and Blue, later this summer, I, my next recording project will be hopefully Colombia and LA between the two places an all Colombian music um, album. Wow. So, That's amazing. You know, I want this music to be heard. And it's music that'll be from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And you sing, and this is the last one before we, we gotta go, but do you sing any songs that were originally sang by uh, male singers? Yes. Like, is there one that, that people might know off the top of your head? Um, a lot of them. I do a lot of Gainsbourg songs, okay. a lot of material. I don't just look Have you done Sinatra women. yet? Well, the song that's in Midway, what I found from S Sinatra's version of it, that's what made me fall in love with it. Wow. Yes. Wow. And he, I studied his enunciation and his inflections a lot in, before going to do that one. Well, like Sinatra, you're doing it your way. <laughs> Annie Trousseau, thank you for coming. Where can people find you? Where can people look you up on the internet and follow you? Instagram, Facebook, Annie Trousseau, that's where I am. Okay. Yeah, I awesome. I'm a terrible with social media, but I'm really trying. As you can see, I'm, I'm a little old-fashioned, but I'm trying. <laughs> You're so, <laughs> I'm I'm so, little, so beautiful. <laughs> the you. glamour of it Thank all. Thank you. All right, well, we're going to be right back after the break with Taylor Thompson to talk about some CBD. Keep it locked on the Zoom. Taylor Thompson from oh, Modest Hemp Co. Yeah. They make CBD products. Yeah. Yes. She's nervous to be here because this is her first time on TV, is, right? Yes, I'm so nervous, okay, but I'm ready. excited. We're gonna I'm ask really you, before we get into Modest Hemp uh, CBD, yes. we're going to ask you three questions. Like, for okay. instance, Go. what's the square root of 13? Oh, that's not a thing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
take awesome. some CBD, you'll be more relaxed. Exactly. So, yeah. Trust me, I already did like a bottle. It's That's crazy. awesome. No, well, you look, I, I, as someone who, I, and now I can admit it, you know, that I've been using hemp products and, and marijuana cannabis related products, you know, awesome. uh, for a long time. Yay. But now I understand the, you know, I've always understood what THC does, because right. it actually kind of helps me for certain things. But I of understand course. now what CBD and the quality of CBD yes. and what, can, what it can do for your health. So explain what Modest Hemp is as a company and then okay. explain what your CBD, CBD, ah, CBD, CBD products do. Okay, <laughs> so we are a retailer and we're a distributor. So we service shops yeah. and we service consumers. And we're also going to be launching here our subscription box as well. We have starter box for our consumers as it's well. It's called the Modest Box. It's called the Modest Box. And this is all Love online. It. So modesthemp.com. Now, CBD, obviously, you guys can see here, I brought a few different products. We have a whole bunch of different types. I'm going to grab but, and see this. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, wait, before, guys, before we do the individual products, oh, yeah. all of us, give us a general uh, understanding for people of that are watching CBD the show is. of what CBD does yes. and, and, and how you can imp integrate it into all these kind of products. Okay, so there's the cannabis plant, mm -hmm. right? And then there's the hemp. That's the hemp side of what we're dealing with. So hemp is from the CBD plant. CBD comes from the hemp plant. So there's no mood altering effects. Mm -hmm. Most of these products are designed for like anxiety, inflammation, sleep for instance stuff like that now obviously we can't say this helps with sleep but we have seen many people that have tried these products that come back to me and they're like amazing and they're designed for that so for mm. instance there's multiple cannabinoids in the hemp plant and the cannabinoids you have an endocannabinoid system we all do so your body reacts to obviously THC and CBD with that so with these extra cannabinoids like CBG and CBN for instance in some of these products they help more for like sleep or they help more for like Anxiety. So they have different levels of like formulation, if that makes any sense. And then a lot of people, uh, I, I want to ask about the legality of it. A lot of people watching us across the country are wondering, wait a minute, I don't live in California or yeah. Colorado. Am I allowed <laughs> right. to order these things? Can they ship right. it to my house without, you know, the, the, the feds showing up? Right. So some, some places do differ. Federally, CBD is legal. According to the Farm Bill in 2018, CBD is now legal. However, there are some counties in which you cannot, like in certain states, that you cannot still use it. Um, mm. So if you are interested in that product, if you would like to try it out, either you can contact your county and city local representation, or just contact us and we can help you, guide you to the best places. If you in, email us at info at modesthemp.com, we'll be more than happy to like kind of direct you to the right places, but it's iffy still. It's still a fledgling industry. There's a lot of new companies jumping on board, you know, and so I think the government ultimately wants to make sure that people are buying the right products and I think that's why some counties are still a little like hesitant to right. the product. The people need to reunite for CBD. Exactly. <laughs> Go to Congress. Revolt. It really does. It, it's an amazing product. So I think you now, guys Do you feel relaxed when you take it? Yes, absolutely. I mean, like I how do. quickly? Like how long does it take you? It depends. Because I'm a nervous wreck. Okay, like, so ten minutes. Why that's that's why we cast you. We cast you <laughs> for the show. Because you're nervous wreck. Right. So no that. CBD. Okay, fine. So it depends, right? Like each person kind of takes a while. And I tell people, try it out, right? Do go about a week. Do about 600 to 1,000 milligrams if you have like a lot of anxiety. Is what I would suggest. Do a dropper to a dropper and a half in the morning and then at night. If you're not feeling it right away, take another dropper. You, you're not gonna like overdose on CBD by taking a dropper of tincture. So mm -hmm. if you take two and a half even, you should be fine. I feel it when I take, I'm at like two and a half now at this point, my anxiety is pretty high and my tolerance has kind of gotten a little bit higher, but I do about two and a half to three droppers of like a thousand milligram of that tincture right there for Hive and I'm set in oh, like 10 minutes, yeah. Right, take us through some of these products. Okay, yeah, I want to check sure. this out. So that's our tincture. Okay. Well, the, none of these products we make, by the way. We just carry and curate these from across the country because we want to carry only the best in the country. This is Hive. We just picked them up. So they have added CBG, which helps, like, inflammation oh. and, like, stuff like and that. And you just drop it in your mouth? Yes. So you do, like, can a I, full... Can I get a drop? Yeah. So you yeah. do, like, a full tincture, <laughs> and then you put it under your tongue and hold it for, like, 10-ish ten, seconds. Okay. And then swallow. Wait, so I swallow all this? Yeah, put it under your tongue. Okay. It okay. won't taste bad. And then hold it. Cabs, are you sick? Mm-mm. Uh, yeah. Am I going to catch a cold? Wait, I keep it there? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then when do I swallow it? I would wait, um, let's see, I'll count it down here. Yeah, beautiful tea. Wait, so this really is, for, this is for what information you So looks CBG good. has been shown to help with inflammation. I can't say yes. Like it's my for back and muscles and stuff like that? I have felt, yes. I have definitely seen, I use that product. I had a knee surgery. Am I going to get too tired because I have a, we have more of a show? You'll be good. Yeah, you'll make it better. Not catch a cold. Oh, You're good. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> we get everyone gets so excited when trying the products that there's just a million it questions. It tastes good. Like, does it taste? It has like a like a strawberry taste, it a taste bit, to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? right. What's this? Like, oh yeah. Strawberry Those are, apple. That's a vapeable product. So okay. this has. Try it all. For instance, like it has different like 
terpenes, and we also just have just straight full spectrum CBD. So there's nothing added in this. This is if somebody wants to vape this product, vapables are immediate. They're okay. the most ingested are product. Swallow it. Swallow it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So these are really popular. Body lotion. Oh yeah. You see, I started using Try something that was like hemp no. oil for my yeah. face. For, okay. So let me ask you about this. This is. Does this coffee. have caffeine? Yes, it's coffee. So, but does it? Is it like a good amount of caffeine? Because I need caffeine in my coffee. Ooh, yes. Smells amazing. Okay. So it's all. It's infused with CBD, but that is. I believe that one is from. Colombia. There is definitely one that's from Colombia that they have that's it very tell you strong. How much coffee, but <sighs> so it's 10 milligrams of CBD roughly per that smells scoop really good. for a tablespoon on that. Okay, they, and this is for me because I drink coffee every day. You got it. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're taking the body lotion. I want the gummies. <laughs> you try it. Now, what are the gummies? Take the gummies. Explain so, the gummies. I, I need this. I'm the like, this is a tropical mix, ladies and gentlemen. They're amazing. They're amazing. There are 10 milligrams per gummy, so I take about two, okay. and I'm okay. good. But honestly, I would prefer tincture. The tincture because you have the most receptors on the bottom of oh your tongue. Oh man, I totally feel that. it. I'm feeling calm. Are you? Are you yeah. that quick? Because I really? still feel like I, I do. I, 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 I'm like Mr. Placebo, so like it, you just it, tell it's me. It's all in your head. <laughs> oh, like like head. nothing's even I'm happening. Blessed. Now, if somebody <laughs> cuts you off in traffic, you just start popping. I would, <laughs> I would do this. I would do this. It's good that calms gummies. you down. Yes, okay. absolutely. This Talk is to almost the person that yes. got you on traffic. They needed to. Mm -hmm. right. 100%. Like, so I'm I got holding you. it out. 100%. Yeah. Hold on. So this is good for like sore muscles and stuff. That one, not necessarily. That one's for moisturization. I have an amazing pain cream that is literally so effective. It's is it crazy. here? Wait a minute. I have it in the. I totally forgot to pull it out, but oh. I can pull it out. Definitely. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wait. It. So this is for what? No, that just... one's for moisturization. Okay. That will help with pain, minor pain and stuff too. Oh, for sure. okay. I love okay, it. Okay, uh, Taylor, we're gonna we're gonna come back. We're gonna keep up. We got you on for one more blog Yay. because we just love CBD products. So keep it right here because yes. we're doing Ooh. CBD products with Taylor Thompson and Modest Hemp Co. on the Zoo. <laughs> All right, we are back on the zoo with Taylor Thompson from yeah. Modest M Co. So did you get the pain? Uh, yes. Uh, what, what do you got there? Let I got you the pain cream. So this is oh. my favorite. I had a knee surgery two and a half years ago. It was horrible. I ripped the cartilage off my kneecap and they oh. had to like put oh. screws and that stuff hurts. in there. Yeah, it was bad. Okay, so I tore my Achilles. Try it. You're going to be blown away. So it's got a cooling feeling to it. This is Pachamama. They're one of our most popular Pachamama. brands. Pachamama! Pachamama! I like that. Yeah, yeah. I love That's that. That's a South American thing. Yes, they have amazing <laughs> tinctures. They have incredible products. I mean, they're- Wait, do, are you guys like, connected with Colombia? Why do you have so wait. many Colombia, South American things going on? <laughs> My Coffee? My family is from Mexico. Okay. Or, well, his family's from Mexico. Um, and we go down there quite often. We've been down to Colombia many times. Is your fiance the owner of the company? Him and I both are, yeah. Okay, uh -huh. he, well, well, then you guys are doing pretty good because I noticed that, uh, that big <laughs> ring on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys just take like a, a, we just a do crap CBD ton masks. of CBD and just lie around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's all we do. No, no, get over here. Yeah, we got, we got, we, let me see if, do, Wait, we, what do, is this do we have any? Is this also for pain? This is a okay. one, yeah. Oh Here's, my God, I have a Try it on, girl. Okay. Can we, uh, Lalo, come here. I'm gonna I gift, I'm gonna gift our, 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 our main LA crew guy here. I have little ones, I have little ones, yeah. With, can I get, can I give this a vape? Yeah, absolutely. Come here. Absolutely. Keep it real. Congratulations. He needs more CBD, a little less THC. Yeah. You like Oprah. CBD. You're getting CBD. You're getting CBD. <laughs> no, he has the THC cover when he needs more CBD. Awesome. This That's amazing. amazing, too. It's really effective. Uh, I would say for pain, these two products oh, are my that. most Smell effective. And then this salve as well. The gummies are delicious. They are? You yeah. Have yeah. yeah. Let me have some. I'm just going to dose myself. <laughs> the, the, the gummies are one of my favorite ever. Which but is your favorite out of everything? Dude, I totally feel like. I mean, like... it just kind of, you do feel it, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it just depends on like what. I love Pachamama. And I love mm. this brand helping friends. This is the brand that helped me after my knee surgery. Okay. Actually, what is that? It's a salve. So these are a little bit different. Salves are a little bit more oil based, and they're I would say for like for someone like had like a surgery like type of thing, right? Like if you're it's like a bomb. After it's this. a bomb, yeah. And you'll see like it's really oil oily based, but it helps so much with the pain that it I couldn't live without Put this it. This on my heart. Yeah, right. What did you do before you did this? How did you even get involved with this? How did I get involved? That's a great <laughs> question. I used to work in the vaping industry, oh, which okay. is like I similar to that. But I actually a lot of my friends started working into CBD about three years ago. I did as well. And I was still in vaping and I was traveling around a lot. 
And then I realized how much it saved my life. It changed my life. Anxiety, my pain, my knee, my back. Like, I'm a messed up kid. I had spina bifida when I was born, and I have wow. no vertebrae in my spine. And I've never had anything take away the pain except for this. So really? it now, just inspired me to start it. Yeah. Now, during the commercial, I was hearing you say how much you love helping people. I do. So do you know, like, if somebody tells you, like, an ailment or something they're struggling with, you know I love, exactly. I love, yeah. I was, like, I was telling you on the break, too. Like, if there's, if you want to give me some stuff that's been bothering you, I'll just send you a list. And I don't even care with people. I tell them, even if you don't buy it from me, I don't care. I just want to help you. Yeah. CBD is an awesome product, and it does help me with sleep, and it does help my anxiety. So if I can help one other person feel a little bit better every day, that's my goal. I already feel better. I, I already love feel it. Awesome. Yeah. fantastic. I feel like I'm so <laughs> happy right now. Yeah. 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 That makes me really happy. I was, I was genuinely nervous. That I you feel guys like I just feel like right a legal away. Vicodin. Okay, no, but let's, uh, let, let's talk about more about, okay, so I don't know if you, if you, if you want to, and before you got into CBD, had you ever had experience with cannabis? Yes. Okay, so yes. You're, you're fine. You're fine. So you understood it. You understood, you know, the, but you, you weren't aware of the CBD qual aspects of it. You just understood, oh, okay, right it can get away. you. Not yeah. right away. I was actually, at first, I was very skeptical of CBD, to be honest. I went to a convention about four years ago, a vape convention, and some guy came up to me and said, hey, bro, I got this, like, vape cart that's, like, CBD. Like, you want to try it? And I was like, it'll help with, like, pain and stuff. And I was like, for sure, and I vaped it, and it made me, like, kind of not, like, not feel well. And I don't think it was actually, like, legit, you know? But I was actually skeptical for two years until one of my very good friends started a brand. He wanted me to sample it because he knew I had anxiety. And I was like, this is witch medicine. Like, I've wow. already tried it. And then he's like, just try it. Do and I tried it? one dropper. Yeah, I do. do. I tried one dropper of it. My anxiety felt like it lifted out of my chest. And I was like, Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. And it changed my life. I, yeah, I totally feel I'm not. I'm not anxious right now. You feel, it's like a way, it's like you don't really normally notice it until you stop taking it and then you go, I can't live without it. It's like once you stop taking it and you're like, I don't know if I really feel it. Then you're like, oh no, I need it. It's that's the way, that's that's the way I feel about these two. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't need them. And then I realize, no, I can't live without, you know, Gabby or Nikki. Oh, we feel the same. Oh, you have like a lot of love giving out right yeah. now because it's Valentine's Day week. Well, because it's I want CBD. Is that the CBD, <laughs> is that the the CBD, CBD speaking? <laughs> it is the CBD, oh, it is the CBD <laughs> speaking, yeah. Yeah, you know, but you know what's funny? It's, it's such an opposite effect because THC usually makes me like more in my head and I don't feel like talking to people. Yeah, yeah. Same. And yeah. CBD, I think, is just one of those things where a lot of people are going to be skeptical about it because there are so many products that don't work. But once you do find a product that does work, it changes your life. Now, where do you guys get the hemp? Is it some? Is it like other farms in California, Colorado, or something? All, like? all of these manufacturers, they get their hemp from their farm. So, I for see. instance, I'm not going to mm. say exactly where because it's right. not my business to say. But a lot of them, for instance, Colorado, Oregon, even sometimes in um, um, uh, Detroit, Michigan, okay. Florida too, as well. Yeah. Oh. So it just depends oh. on where. The first time I had CBD was actually in an alcoholic beverage. Oh really? wow! Really yeah. interesting. Is, and it, it was great. More. Was it? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. No, because I was sassy, but then relaxed. That's <laughs> it was a good combination. <laughs> and I feel like he that's starting less trouble. He was starting less trouble. Right trouble. <laughs> less trouble <laughs> thank God. Just because of the drink. That. I love that. That's well, amazing. we can go together next time and get it. Uh, I want to try it. Right. It's okay, a zoom field trip. I'm super yeah. down. Yeah. So <laughs> where is Modest Hemp Company based out of here in California? We're in Long Beach. Yeah. Hey, five six two eight. <laughs> and so you started this company with your fiance. Yes, I did. How did that? How did it come about that the two of you were like, yeah, let's start a CBD company? He was working for one and actually got fired. Uh. Not fired. He he had to like leave. It was an awkward drama moment, and um, he could have gotten another job in a CBD company. But I was like, no, we can do this. Let, let, let's do our thing. I don't want to keep working for people anymore, and we're, yes. we're capable. So we did it. Wow. How long have you guys been doing it? About over a year now. About okay. a year and three months. Do you like months. working with him? I love, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they always say don't work. I'm just like, you're thinking others. But we so. have moments. We have moments. But he always keeps me leveled. He okay. always keeps me leveled. Is it the CBD I know. I was like, he's dropping stuff. 50 <laughs> drinks. <laughs> Yeah. All right, before we have a, a, another meeting, let's just take some CBD so everybody can just be calm. Exactly. Yes. So where can people find you guys online? Modesthemp.com, on Instagram, Modest Hemp Co., Facebook, Modest Hemp Co., and all that fun stuff. So. Sweet. Thank you so much for thank coming by, so and thank much. you for all the CBD. Thank you. Awesome. This Appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back on The Zoo. Everybody, we have a super exciting guest. He's an actor. He's a musician. Give a nice warm welcome to Rodrigo Massa. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now let's say the movie he's in because yes. I know the name. Ready? One, two, three. El, El Dragon. Return, Return of the Warrior. Warrior. That's amazing. Wow. 
Tell us about this movie because I love the title. <laughs> well, I love it. Uh, it's it's an amazing uh, production. Uh, we, it was airing on Univision. It was produced by Televisa. And now it's just all over the place because we have it on Netflix. So it's being watched worldwide. And I'm getting messages from like Italy, Croatia, Japan. People That's were watching incredible. it all over. international oh now. Yeah, yeah, look exactly. at you. And it, it, it all started very internationally because my character is actually Italian from the south of Italy and I had to sort of learn the dialect as well so that I could you know per perform the way it has to be now a lot, a lot of people are just trying to do something that's kind of stereotypical I didn't want to fall into that I wanted mm -hmm. it to be very authentic because and, where are you from um, originally? I'm from Brazil and then I lived in Mexico for 13 years and now Jeez. I'm based in Vancouver Whoa. in yeah. Mexico where in Mexico? Ciudad de Mexico yes so when was El Dragón originally uh, aired? Uh, it started airing in uh, Univision, I think, like what, five months ago, probably? But what, So how does the Netflix thing work? After it, uh, they have their first run on Univision, then it goes to Netflix? Uh, Univision already aired the whole thing. Uh, Netflix divided it into two seasons. Did so you expect you it to have that second one on Netflix, or is this like an added surprise? That it was an added surprise when when they were like, "Oh, it's going to be on Netflix." We were like, "Whoa!" Because Televisa stopped uh, providing content to Netflix at a certain point, and mm. they they started doing that again after like many years. So, and this was the first show that they uh, actually sold to Netflix like in the last ten years. I wow. think. Wow. So. They, yeah, that was pretty cool, um, and it's so cool that you know, like the United States already saw it because this two seasons, was o the two seasons already aired. But the only the first season is on Netflix right now, and the second one is premiering this year. So it's kind of confusing. I don't know if you got it. No, you're here. Yeah. You <laughs> you're restarting your international fan base after already getting the Latin American. Yeah, fans. exactly. It's gonna get to the point where I can you can't walk in the streets. You're not. You're gonna be in Italy. You'll be like, oh, wait, calm down. I hope so. Wait a minute. <laughs> but the thing is that also on Netflix they have uh, English subtitles. They didn't have that on Univision, right? Yeah. So now Nicky can watch it because his Spanish is better totally. than mine, but still not on par for like you know to but just watch it. But you're Italian is good. You can, you My can Italian, watch. no, I barely speak English. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, and and sp how can you like spend time with these guys? Because and, and we because we needed some we needed some diversity on the show, so we had to get someone who didn't speak any Spanish but, <laughs> but wanted to hang around with Latinos. Yes, yes. Uh, and you're yeah. speaking Spanish all the time. You should like. Pick, pick up some I can feel your disappointment in me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so tell us about how this new season of El Dragon is going to differ from the first one. What happens in this season? Uh, second season, oh, things get crazy. Um, all my crazy, like, specifically talking about my character, all my crazy stunts are in the second season. Uh, there are some things that I was very afraid to film. Like, I am terrified of helicopters. And oh. I had this one action scene. Perfect. Everyone has that reaction. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I know. We don't even and go for one scene on a helicopter. Like, a lot of things happened. Like, here in the United States, people already know what I'm talking about. The rest of the world doesn't. But, yeah, I was terrified of that scene. We shot it, like, one year ago. Um, yeah, I was just shaking so bad. And so many things happened in that scene. But, uh, so did you, you do all your stunts? Oh, go ahead. No, so you do all your stunts. I know sometimes I like a double, like a per per uh, professional that yeah. actually does all these stunts. So you're the one doing them. Yeah, actually, there was just this, this one scene that they had a stunt for me. Uh, but in the end, they couldn't even use him because, like, his hair was all different. They, like, I don't know what happened. And they were like, well, you're kind of, you're kind of gonna have to do your own stunts, oh, and I was like, no. okay. And then I was like on Instagram, okay, they hired this guy to be my stunt, and then like I posted the picture, and I was like, oh, but I didn't use him because hashtag I do my own stunt. Oh, wow. that's awesome. <laughs> now listen, if a bad guy's coming for you in real life, do you feel confident that no. you can? No, <laughs> no. no. But you're, come on, you've been an Andrew. Well, you're gonna need yeah. security yeah. when you go internationally now to travel. You gotta have to have a whole security decal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's switch. I, Go ahead, no, no, finish. No, 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 no. I, I'm, not, I'm not one of those guys who are going to be, like, super okay. confident. You can be his security. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, we're better than Gabby. Yeah. Gabby will be the security. She knows how to kick. Yesterday, there was, a guy, there was a guy staring at me at a restaurant yesterday, and I was, like, all freaked out, you know? Because, like, he was really staring at me, like, he wanted to kill me, like, really strong stare, and I, I, I was freaking out. I'm not one of those guys. You know what it is, though? You have an excellent complexion. He was noticing that you have great skin. I was oh, just yeah. going to say, do you have any makeup on right now? Uh, just, I don't, no, I don't think so. He has great skin, doesn't he? Yeah. Like he just came Dude. from the womb. Like, legit, I was looking at it, I was like, this guy has 
has a baby face. Like, yeah. his skin Stop is... Stop bathing in virgin blood. I <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we only got a couple So let's get to the other things. Uh, yes. Your single. music. Yes, I, I am uh, promoting my new single right now, If I Close My Eyes. I it's, love it. It's so beautiful. I heard it. it. I was like, oh, callate, voy a enamorarme aquí, Dios mío. <laughs> Did you see the music video? I with did. All the, the marriage proposals. Uh, oh. That was uh, amazing. Released was... on Valentine's Day. Yeah, well, a little bit before Valentine's Day because okay. I wanted people to have time to get to know it to ah, use it on Valentine's yes. Day. So include it on your playlists. It, they're going to be very successful because it's literally, I've written a lot of very romantic songs in my life, but I think this is the most romantic one by far. I wanted to write the perfect anthem for marriage proposals mm. and a lot of people are saying that, you know, I did it. So He's a Latino Ed Sheeran, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we have the song in Spanish as well. So we have Sin Mirar Atrás and we have If I Close My Eyes, so just choose, you know, whatever. So you speak you English, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, Portuguese, and Italian. Italian, wow. French. Wow. I'm learning Polish Everyone right on this show well. speaks a bunch of languages. Exactly, yes. but me. Yeah. 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 Wait, but wait, hold on. What is it? Now you made an appearance on Flash. Yes, and it's, uh, I don't know when this is airing, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, premiered and... Um, when did you play on Flash? Uh, I can't tell. He is Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know It's he is. premiered, because it's about to premiere, so I don't know if I can say okay, it. Okay, because your, your role gives away part yeah, of the plot. I'm, I'm like w with uh, Grant Gustin and Candon Patton, and wow. yeah, it's, it was an amazing experience just moving to Vancouver and starting, having such a good start, you know, yeah. in this new market. Dude, the time is now for someone who has a, a really nice, elegant, classy, subtle accent like yourself and good skin. This is your and time. Uh, this, and you do your own he stunts. Wants your he wants good, skin. And he does his own stunts. <laughs> he wants yeah. your skin. That sounds weird. No, he wants your skin, <laughs> no. Regimen. Like, he wants no, to know no, what no, you're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> Dude, thank you for coming, man. I know thank it was you. quick, but thank listen, you. we have your show. It's got, yes. It has found new life on Netflix. Yes. We have your, your single that yes. uh, is already out, and we have your appearance on Flash. Exactly. You're the busiest and man in show business, everything. so we're gonna have kind to let of. you go because we gotta wrap up the show. <laughs> <laughs> Rodrigo, thank you very much. Also, we thank wanna thank so Taylor much. Thompson thank and you. Annie Trousseau, <laughs> and I wanna thank my co-hosts over here, Nikki and Gabby. You gotta keep it locked on Ali TV. Till next time, peace. Bye.